An Internet of Things device needs to be on the internet. While some microcontrollers are a system on a chip with a Wi-Fi radio, many are not. Which is why a dual band companion IC, like the one we look at from Nordic Semiconductor, is interesting. In this video, we look at the NRF7002, overview the development kit for it, explore a code example, make some RF measurements, and compare options to get started with the IC. Welcome back to Workbench Wednesdays. My name is James, let's go compare. This video is sponsored by Nordic Semiconductor. You might know Nordic because of their 2.4 GHz wireless system on chips or SOCs that support a wide range of protocols. They also have modules that connect to cellular networks. The NRF70 is their first Wi-Fi series. The NRF7002 operates at 2.4 and 5 GHz and is Wi-Fi 6 compatible, meaning it supports features like target wake time, station mode, OFDMA, and BSS coloring. And to be upfront, I am not covering those technologies in depth or even testing them in this video. But let me know if that's something you're interested in. This companion chip connects to their existing SOCs or other microcontrollers via SPI or Quad SPI. There is also a port called Coexistence available that enables the NRF70 to share an antenna with a Bluetooth radio and to manage which radio is active. The NRF7002 is the full-featured dual-band version, the 7001 only operates at 2.4 GHz, and the 7000 only provides location via SSID. All three chips are available as a 6mm QFN package. Nordic offers several boards to help you get started and to use the NRF7002. The development kit, or DK, has a NRF7002 connected to a 5 GHz and a 2.4 GHz chip antenna through an RF switch. These SWF ports allow you to connect a spectrum or signal analyzer. It connects via Quad SPI to a host NRF5340 SOC, which contains two ARM Cortex M33 cores, support for near-field communications, and a Bluetooth 5.4 radio. It connects to the 2.4 GHz antenna through an RF switch. The processor also connects to the Arduino Uno form factor pin headers that break out the GPIO functions and its own USB connector. A second NRF5340 is an interface IC. It runs the Seeger J-Link onboard interface firmware to program and debug the host processor via a dedicated USB port. And there are headers for an external programmer as well. That same USB can also power the board. Alternatively, you could connect a LiPo battery. The pin headers simplify measuring current consumption with a power profiler kit. For usability, there are two general purpose push buttons and two LEDs. Nordic supports its chips through the NRF Connect desktop application, Toolchain Manager, and the NRF Connect SDK, which also works with VS Code. Inside of there, there are extensions from Nordic. Once they're installed, it is very easy to build a new application or check out the sample code. For example, we can look at the Wi-Fi shell application. Before this video, I followed Nordic's tutorials on configuring a build for the NRF7002 DK board, so we just build the code as is. And while that builds, I connect a USB cable to the onboard programmer. Back in VS Code, let's take a look at the device tree editor where you can assign pins and their functions. For example, on this design kit, you can clearly see which pin of the host controller is connected to the NRF70's butt converter enable signal. By the way, I should mention the NRF70 has its own butt converter that you can turn off to save power. I also like how memory is visualized. It's interesting to see that the NRF70 driver takes up a good chunk of ROM, but only a few K of RAM, at least when you compare it to the Zephyr real-time OS. And I'm not making any judgments there, I just am not used to seeing a memory map as an interactive donut chart. Anyway, let's get back to the Wi-Fi shell example. Flashing the code is relatively quick. You can tell the interface IC is programming the other IC because the LED blinks very fast. Let's open up a NRF serial terminal, which in my case is going to be virtual COM port 15. Here we get a shell prompt from the host microcontroller, which is running Zephyr. The command I'm most interested in is called Wi-Fi. It has a whole bunch of its own commands, including one called scan. Even I know what that one does. Let's connect to hi there using channel 36, since this is a chip capable of 5 GHz operation. 
After connecting to the access point, it takes a couple of seconds for DHCP to get an IP address, which we can ping from the PC connected to the same network. Going back through the list of Wi-Fi commands, one caught my attention related to the power supply. And that's when I remembered the DK board has headers for current measurements, so let's go do some of those next. The Power Profiler Kit is also from Nordic. It is a USB-based current meter. It replaces a pin header on the DK, which is connected to the NRF72. In the software, it graphs current consumption across time. For example, the spikes are when the Wi-Fi radio is active. By pinging the NRF7002 or changing its connection state, we can see its dynamic power usage. For example, it looks like it spikes to about 200 milliamps when transmitting and idles around 60 milliamps. Over here is when it is off. Nordic's documentation also provides a way to use two PPKs to compare current consumption of the host processor and the NRF7002 separately. If you are doing anything with battery-powered IoT devices, I highly recommend the Power Profiler Kit. In fact, I bought that one myself a while back, and I'm really glad I did. It's a great tool. Okay, now let's go do some RF measurements. The SWF socket is a switch that disconnects the chip antennas. It allows you to make RF measurements with the NRF7002. The socket is also from Murata, who sells an adapter that goes from the port to an SMA or 3.5mm coax cable. That conveniently plugs into a 50 ohm instrument like a spectrum analyzer. The Wi-Fi radio test sample provides direct access to the radio. For example, here is the RF signal out of the NRF7002. And if you know Wi-Fi channels really well, you can probably figure out which one this is. Or we can force the chip to use channel 3, which is at 2.422 GHz. The transmitter's amplifier stage is configurable, so let's save a copy of this trace. And then set the transmit power to zero somethings. With that, we see an almost 20 dB drop. Now let's save this trace as well, so that we can change the power to 10 somethings. Now we can see the signal is 10 dB stronger than before. Looking at the other commands, there are a bunch of Wi-Fi protocol things you can change. Which, if I had a signal analyzer that supported Wi-Fi, I could show you more, but I don't. I just want you to see the types of things you could configure with this board. Speaking of boards, this is not the only way you could evaluate the NRF7002. Nordic currently offers three boards with the NRF7002, the DK, EK, and EB. The EK, or Evaluation Kit, contains only the NRF70 chip and supporting circuit on an Arduino-style shield. Nordic intends for it to be connected to their other design kits so you can add Wi-Fi 6 to their other BLE SOCs. Technically, it should work with Arduino boards, but keep in mind that the NRF70 is not 5V tolerant, so it should only be used with 3.3V boards like the Arduino Uno R4. Yeah, I know, that board already has a Wi-Fi chip, but at the time I record this, it's the only one I have, and there's no Arduino libraries for the NRF7002 anyway. However, there is a proof-of-concept driver available for Raspberry Pi if you are running Ubuntu. The EB or expansion board is dual-purpose. It has an edge connector designed for Nordic's Thingy53, which is an all-in-one device containing an NRF53 SoC and various sensors. It also ships with firmware to work with Edge Impulse, a third-party platform that helps build and deploy machine learning modules very quickly. The EB adds Wi-Fi capability to the Thingy53, but you can also break off the edge connector and solder the castellated pads to a custom PCB, which is somewhat easier than designing the NRF7002 into a custom board. Ask me how I know. In summary, the DK is the most complete development kit and is ideal if you plan to design a board from scratch. The EK is good if you are already familiar with another SoC's DK and just want to add Wi-Fi to that. And the EB is good for the Thingy53 or to easily add Wi-Fi 6 to a custom board without dealing with all of the RF design stuff. You can find show notes over on the Element 14 community. I put links to the four different products mentioned along with some other links. Let me know over there if you have questions or ideas on how to use the NRF7002 in your designs. Hey, thanks for watching. Check the link below for show notes on the Element 14 community. You'll find lots of great stuff over there. If you want to see more videos from me or the other host, tap or click the things on the screen. For now, it is time for me to get back to my electronics workbench.